I understand that everybody, that um, every person who, who has been presenting the, the intervening and presenting a company has made a, a brief presentation of, of the of the company, and uh, my intention is um, to do that, but, 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 but just in a very, very brief uh, way. I guess many of you are familiar with uh, our company, but in any case, just to fulfill that uh, little, let's say, marketing bit, uh, we are um, uh, a, a company that is, a, we, we like to characterize, characterize the company as a company with a very, as a silo, a company with an integrated model um, we in a model that provides a very balanced uh, set of activities for the company and that is allowing us to um, uh, maintain a very stable uh, result. Uh, by the way, satisfactory if, uh, for shareholders, stakeholders, at the same time that we provide the services that we believe uh, society requires uh, from us. As you can see, we are in terms of, uh, and this is a very stable, very, very stable, uh, those, those figures are very stable si since we, uh, the company was incorporated in 2002. We maintain clearly a, a, a better return on equity than our peers. Our cost to income shows uh, the efficiency of our business. We, we are very proud of that. Uh, we pay very high dividends. Uh, our payout ratio is, uh, goes between 80 something and 99%. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and then we have this, uh, we are very, very uh, also very uh, cost uh, conscious uh, company but we are very proud of this uh, um, other parameter that and we'll talk about this later that um, our the revenues that we have been developing not linked to the trading volumes are uh, very high probably nobody in the in the industry has anything like that that means basically we'll, we'll see that later that uh, with no trade, not a single trade, and this is our main activity, uh, other revenues are able to cover 117% of our costs. So this is a very lucky situation. But anyway, my, my, what I, I'm, I, maybe I'll say something about uh, what you were uh, told in the, in the program. Uh, uh, something about uh, how to, to, to be, how to move from national to international or something like that? Is that the point? Well, that has nothing to do with this. But um, so going to this point in the program, I would just uh, mention two or three things that are, correspond to our case. Uh, basically, I would say that um, um, we are quite international, uh, in fact, very, very international. Um, Seventy percent, more than probably seventy-five percent of our of our activity, no, not in trading, but also in many of the other things we do, um, are in, done uh, uh, in, uh, um, in, has a reference or. Um, takes place um, uh, outside of Spain. 75% uh, of the trading comes from non-resident uh, investors. But uh, what I think uh, uh, would make uh, a company uh, or market to move from national to international is to have interesting companies, to have international companies. And how do you get international companies? Well, I, I only can tell you how we did it. Uh, it happened because, uh, in many ways, because of, uh, of the euro. 
If you have a, a currency that is, uh, if you're in a country that doesn't have a, I would, what I would call an international currency, the chances that your market is going to be very international are, I believe, more limited. So when the, with, uh, with the euro, uh, the Spanish companies were able to become international companies, multinational corporations, um, together with the fact that some of these companies uh, were being privatized. And the, the privatization process was uh, clever, uh, very well done. The result was that the free float of these companies, you know the names, Telefonica, Repsol, um, BBVA, Santander, or whatever, uh, have millions of shareholders. Uh, I insist the free flow is, can be considered practically 100%. And uh, that was uh, um, uh, one of the reasons of the, the, the how the, why the market became uh, international. If, if even now, a um, uh, clear example uh, or a clear evidence is that uh, in, in Europe, uh, I think the, the, the three most uh, liquid stocks and the three most traded stocks, number one, number two, and number three are Santander, Telefonica, and BBVA. Repsol is number six. And then we have our others like uh, Inditex that is now number seven or eight or nine, something, something like that. So that, but all, all that comes from the fact that we have, at, this, at the right time, we could the, um, the develop the financing of these companies uh, in an international currency, the euro. We would not have been able to do this with the peseta. And as I said, the the the, the privatizations or the IPOs were done in a very clever way, uh, and um, they got a lot of um, of. Um, uh, a, a big, big free float. And then the thing that keeps that situation going on is that we provide uh, the connectivity. I mean, we could not have 75% of uh, our business coming from everywhere in the world if we didn't, ha we didn't have a very efficient, uh, fast, uh, reliable, credible, or whatever technology. And uh, our, mar our market data um, uh, uh, provision uh, uh, is uh, also very efficient, uh, and all these things. And also, to begin with, to finish, uh, you have to be uh, also very transparent in the regulation in everything you do. Well, that that was just a, a, a little interruption of my. A speech, because the the purpose of the purpose, the purpose of my very brief speech today was um, was different. Uh, was basically uh, to make a couple of comments. One of them about this: what, what's happening? What's happening in the in the, in the industry? And, uh, and we have seen lately that, uh, in particular, with this uh, acquisition of, uh, with the pretended acquisition of uh, uh, NICE Euronext by ICE, that uh, ICE is not interested in the European cash markets. Well, they, will, they have said that they will dispose, uh, one way or another, of um, the, the cash operations. Yesterday, even, uh, heard that they were going to sell some Matif or something like that. No? The, but anyway, um, obviously, I have nothing to say about that uh, decision. Uh, that's uh, their, their business. But uh, I take the opportunity to remind you, just to, just in case there is a, there is a, a perception that cash markets are or irrelevant or less relevant or whatever, that the equity markets, in my opinion, uh, are essential providers of capital in our economies, and that uh, that role, together, together with the, the determination of credible prices that we do continuously for probably the most important 
and valuable assets in each economy has an enormous social and economic value that surpasses the role of the activities in other markets like derivatives, for instance. Uh, as a business, uh, I mean, compare the, the, the cash business with the derivatives business over there, well, all this can be debatable. Uh, because uh, then you you have uh, other other elements in, in question like uh, the management, uh, the knowledge you have of the business, whatever. So my, my point is just with the occasion of this um, of this uh, um, uh, decision, where um, uh, uh, ICE is uh, deciding to forget about a, a very substantial. Uh, um, uh, activity in Europe, uh, I would like to say just um, this thing, that I, be, I believe um, uh, and affirm that the, uh, the equity markets play a very essential role. And uh, this is uh, even uh, more clear uh, when we look at this, very, in my opinion, very, very interesting uh, table. This is uh, uh, what's happening in, in the world, and uh, it, uh, it's uh, of particular relevance in, this, uh, in the crisis in which uh, we are still living. Um, for a number of reasons, uh, we are not going to go into that. That could take, uh, uh, obviously, a very long time, but the... the uh, um, uh, the financing, uh, 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 banking financing, is consistently has been consistently uh, much relevant in the uh, in the European uh, markets than in the U.S., for instance. So the the the, the, the as you say the, the the extremes are Spain, where uh, market-based financing is only 20%, and the US, where market-based financing is 80%. Well, I, my point is that at this particular time, with a clear and necessary deleveraging uh, in the economy, when uh, banks are going to reduce their sizes, uh, there is a very, very clear opportunity for the exchanges to um, uh, uh, make progress in advancing their business in equities and non-equities, uh, and helping to change a financial structure that uh, has proven to be not, not the best in our times. Uh, clearly, the, the, we'll re I'll repeat that later, but um, the contractual, the, 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 the excessive debt, in, in fact, this is, a, this is a proof of the excessive debt in the, in the economy. No? Uh, mm, uh, but the, 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 the contractual nature of debt uh, makes, uh, imposes a, a, a structural rigidity that uh, then uh, makes very difficult uh, the potential sy systemic adjustments that are necessary in the, in the economy uh, at certain moments, like now. Uh, anyway, so the, my, my point here is that the, all this is a, is, is, a, is a measure of the potential of the market-based economy vis-a-vis uh, uh, the banking-based, uh, excuse me, market-based financing vis-à-vis -vis the market, the bank-based financing. I think the exchanges have. It's very difficult. It's very difficult, and uh, you have to pay, uh, analyze the possibilities in equities and in, in debt and things like that. But the potentiality is enormous, and uh, and and this happens at a historical moment when we are all convinced that the 
this uh, the this uh, bank financing is excessive, and this is because it's clearly re related to the excess of debt that uh, we have in the system. Anyway, going back to um, also the, having uh, reading the papers a little bit, there you have the something that appeared in the Economist uh, recently, uh, and. Um, uh, with a very lucky, in my opinion, very, some, a very lucky sentence there. The stock market is good if it enables companies to raise equity or real financing. That that was a, something, a reference to India. Uh, but I, I, I bring this just to insist a little more on this uh, relevant role for the, for the economy of uh, the equity financing. And, and the and the mechanisms that facilitate that financing like like um, uh, cash markets um, in that article they talk about how India could uh, easily uh, uh, absorb fifty to one hundred one hundred billion uh, dollars of equity capital and uh, I use this to remind you that uh, in uh, two thousand and twelve uh, the, the last year, the financing provided by stock exchanges at uh, world level, the equity financing provided by stock exchanges at world level exceeded uh, 600 more. It was more than 621 billion dollars, which is a, quite a big figure. By the way, uh, the London Stock Exchange, together with with ourselves, BME were the largest uh, uh, financiers in, in, in Europe, with the amounts uh, reaching in, 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 a, in a difficult year, um, uh, around more than 30 billion euros um, in, two, 12, in two, um, 2012. Mm. That would be second in the second in that would be a second position in the world and fifth. Uh, for investment flows facilitated to the economies. The, 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 the relevant thing is that uh, the big flows, the big financing took place in Asia, in the, in the Asian markets. Well, in fact, what I, I have been trying to say in, 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 with, in these uh, two or three comments I made is that probably uh, given the, the situation in which we are, the recognition that uh, uh, this uh, disproportionate growth of uh, global debt uh, uh, and the nature the, the, uh, of the, the contractual nature of debt uh, imposes uh, uh, difficulties and uh, structural rigidities in the markets. I think that is clearly the time for less debt uh, and more equity um, here, I repeat, this is the same I have been trying to say before. There is clearly a, a very good um, window of opportunity for equity exchanges. But it's not easy, it's difficult, but uh, it, can, it should be, uh, and I think we are all working on this, it should be tried. And it would be good for everybody. And. Um, so that was one point. And the other point, another observation, is what my, um, our friends in NASDAQ, I, going back again, back to, I, the, that's all, the only thing I do, I read the papers. Uh, and um, that uh, my friend uh, Bob Greifel said the other day, uh, something like, uh, mm, it's there. Uh, how we made our money in the past uh, will not be how we make our money in the future. Okay. I. I Probably I agree with that, but I think I bring this because I think this is a, a pattern uh, uh, that um, we are going to see more of this uh, in the in the future. Uh, uh, but the key is that at the same time that we do that, even if we we would call this diversification, but certain type of diversification. We are not going to go into uh, uh, gas stations, um, um, things like that, right? You know, um, we should do things that are, um, that help us to maintain our key role and uh, that are close and favor the real, the real economy. Not uh, um, 
things that are disparate things or whatever. Anyway, I agree with that, and uh, the only thing I, I'm happy also to say is that, um, uh, as I said at the beginning, with that diver type of di diversification, we have been working on this since uh, practically we were founded, or we are in existence, and uh, this is uh, one of our strengths. Um, as I said, nobody has this situation, no, no, no company, no competitor has uh, this situation uh, so favorable. Uh, but th this has been uh, uh, one of our um, features and uh, that we are very proud and I uh, think we are achieving what uh, we wanted. I hope we, we will be able to continue. But it, it, but it is true what Bob Greifel said, only that we are a few years ahead of Bob, but that's, that's okay. Anyway, thank you very much.